To determine if a linear model is appropriate, we really need to look at a scatter plot and a residual plot of the data. Let's start with the scatter plot. Press the STAT button and press Enter. These are our list, and we're going to type the distance from Natalie in list 1 and the ball's height in list 2. Now press second and y equals to access your stat plot menu. Press enter on plot one, turn it on, and it's already selected scatter plot with list one and list two. So that's perfect. We're just gonna press zoom and the number nine. All right, here's a scatter plot. And right away, it looks like there's some slight curvature going on. So maybe a linear model's not appropriate. We should also check a residual plot. Press stat again and go to calculate. Choose the LINREG AX plus B option. We can leave list 1 as our explanatory variable and list 2 as our response variable, and where it says store regression equation, press the VARS button and go over to YVARS and press enter on function. Choose Y1. What this will do is after it calculates our least squares regression equation, it will store it in Y1 so we can see it on the graph. All right, press enter on calculate. Here's our slope and here's our y-intercept. So now when I press y equals, you can see y1 is now our least squares regression equation. So if I press graph, I can see how well a line fits the data. It looks like not very well. Press the stat button again and press enter. We wanna calculate the residuals. So the residuals are the observed heights minus what our model would predict the heights would be. So if you go over to list three and press up, this is our formula bar, and we're gonna type in our least squares regression equation so it can predict the ball's height for each of these distances from Natalie. If you press VARS and you go down to statistics and go over to the equation menu, choose regression equation. So here's our regression equation that we just calculated. I'm going to go over to X though, and I'm going to change this to list one by pressing second and one. Now when I press enter, these are all my expected heights of the ball for these distances. So the residuals are the observed heights minus the expected heights. So I went over to list four and pressed up, and I'm going to say take list two, second two, and subtract list three, second three. All right, these are my residuals. Now let's make a residual plot. First, let's clear out our regression equation from Y1. Now press second and Y equals to get to the stat plot menu again. A residual plot has the explanatory variables, so list one as its X axis and the residuals for its Y axis. So I'll change this to list four, second four, so it uses our residuals. Now when I press zoom and nine again, here's my residual plot. Now this one shows clear curvature, not random scatter. So now we know for sure a linear model is not appropriate. Let's take another look at our residual plot. Because there's a pattern in our residual plot, it suggests we can come up with a better model for predicting the ball's height from the distance from Natalie. In part B, Stephanie suggests taking the square root of the response variable. So I'm gonna press stat and then enter to get back to our list. Now our original response variable is stored in list two. So I'm gonna go over to list five and press up, and I'm gonna say, take the square root of list two, second two. All right, here's the square root of list two. Let's make a new scatter plot with this transformed variable. If I press second and y equals, I'm gonna make a scatter plot with our original explanatory variable in list one, and our response variable is going to be in list five, our transformed response variable. If I press zoom in nine, that looks pretty linear, but I wanna check a residual plot just in case. So if I press stat and I calculate the least squares regression equation on the transform data, okay, here's my new regression equation. I'm gonna go back to my list, and in list six, I'm gonna calculate my expected heights with the new model. So I'll press VARS again, choose statistics, go over to equation and choose regression equation. So this is our new regression equation, and I'll change this to list one. All right, here's our expected heights. I'm gonna press over 
Oh, I'm actually out of list. So I'm just gonna use list four, which was our original residuals. So I'm gonna press up and then clear and down. Now my list is clear. Okay, list four is gonna be our residuals of our transform data. So that's list five minus list six. All right, here's our new residuals. So our new residual plot is going to be list one for our explanatory variable and list four for our residuals. All right, now our residual plot shows random scatter. This is a good thing. With no patterns in our residual plot, it suggests our model can't really be improved. It's doing the best it can. So we're gonna say the transformation did achieve linearity. The scatter plot now shows a strong linear form between distance from Natalie and the square root of the ball height. The residual plot shows random scatter, suggesting our model is appropriate. Let's rerun the linreg function to get our least squares regression equation. So our slope is approximately 0.4754 and our y-intercept is about 0.05189. Now this equation actually predicts the square root of our height. So our equation is our predicted square root of height equals 0.4754 times the distance plus 0.05189. If we substitute in a 15 for distance, we can predict the height when the ball is 15 feet from Natalie. So our predicted square root of the height is 7.18289. We just need to square this value to get our actual height prediction. So our predicted height is about 51.594. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.